Hello everyone, this is Robert Harris. I am here to welcome you to Vulcan's Forge. And to my immediate right is the executive producer of Vulcan's Forge, who is Juan Miller. Juan, welcome again. As always, my friend and partner, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Robert. Today we have Joe Link on today from Marjorie Book Continuing Education Society. Uh -huh. Okay, great. And, and Joe is just to our my far right here. And Joe, again, welcome once again to this program. And uh, we are delighted to welcome you here and to have you here and, and, and have you talk about what you're doing and how it relates to Vulcan Sports. And I'm going to turn it right back into the hands of Juan because he tells the story better than I can. I love the story of Vulcan Sports and its name and its meaning. Vulcan Sports, the uh, name Vulcan Sports came from the name of the mythical Greek god Vulcan, a Roman god, Roman god Vulcan, that uh, Vulcan was the son of Jupiter and Juno. Jupiter and Juno were the king and queen of the gods. And since Vulcan was the son of the king and the queen of the gods, you would expect him to be a beautiful baby, wonderful little baby. As it was, he was born small and deformed. And Juno, his mother, was so upset, she hurled him off the top of Mount Olympus, and he fell for several days. And he finally hit the water on the earth, and he hurt one of his legs, which is how he became injured and disabled. He was then raised by sea nymphs, and one day he found the embers, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of a fisherman's fire on the beach. And he found that by heating certain stones, he could create silver and gold and iron. And he found that by heating these stones, he could form jewelry and other things. And so eventually he became the jeweler of the gods and he made their weapons too. And that's, we, we refer to Vulcan because he had a disability, but he overcame his disability to create fine art. And that's where the, uh, the term Vulcan's Forge comes uh, back. And he I, worked I, at I, his forge. Juan, I love the story and I love the way you tell it because that's what I feel in myself, you know, that that I have some of Vulcan in me. So I, I was I was born, I was considered okay, became disabled at eight months. Doctors gave me a for dead, they gave me three days to live. Uh, seventy two years <laughs> later, I'm still here. All my doctors are dead. You know, mm -hmm. and everything they said I couldn't do, you did. I've done. Mm -hmm. Except walk. I've never walked. But everything <laughs> else I've, I've done, and I've done it successfully by the grace of God. And this is why I'm glad that Joe is here, and I'm glad that you're here. Because my visibility, my, my, my disability is very visible. You know, and, and yours, you have one, but it's, it's visible. I don't know whether Joe has one or not, but he will talk about it anyway. I, you got several, but we'll leave that for another <laughs> program. <laughs> but at any rate, he looks good, you know, and he was working with people with and without disabilities to show everyone, show the world the talent that can be had and the, what we can accomplish if we only don't worry about labeling, but worry, or not even worry, but just take that reign and run as far as we can and as fast as we can. So once again, Joe, you know, I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks for having me on the show, Robert and Juan. Um, Marjorie Book uh, Continuing Education is a group that, as you were saying, it's a very open group. We try mm -hmm. to get um, a lot of diverse people together, and we do operate a theater program where we produce three uh, theatrical productions a year. Um, we also offer um, some classes uh, on Friday nights. In fact, right now we're doing a theater related class, which we don't always do theater related classes, but we're doing a Romeo and Juliet in film class. Um, and then we also do a number of service projects on the weekends around the Cincinnati community and even take some service trips out of town. So all of these activities we engage in, they're intended to be uh, you know, a vehicle or a forum so people of different ages, people of different abilities um, can get together and work on a common project. Now, Joe, you, again, you, you're tantalizing me because I know a little bit about what, what you're talking about, but I want you to talk a lot about what you have mentioned, and that is, you know, the 
project that you, you go have going on now on Friday relates to theater and relates to drama and relates to film as well. And you're dealing with Romeo and Juliet and you're dealing with Shakespeare and these things. Tell us about that. How does that, uh, what does that look like? What, the, what are you hoping to gain from that? Because I know I had a little sneak preview because we worked together over the summer and we did some of this and it was kind of neat because I hadn't thought about it. How many times has Romeo and Juliet not only been performed on stage, but has actually been put into film and even some more uh, kind of modern day takes on it. So can you talk about that a little bit? Because it was fun for me. I enjoyed it. Hmm. Yeah, I, and I, I know that the folks who are going to see it now are enjoying it. So it's all yours. Juan, feel free to jump in here. Don't let me talk too much. You seem to be doing a good job. Well, I love I'm talking right now, something. so I'm trying to shut up so I can let Joe do his thing. Let Joe do his thing? <laughs> okay. Well, our theater program over the, over the years has mostly done the works of well-established playwrights, and that brings you know positives and negatives with it. Um, and one of the playwrights we have performed in the past is Shakespeare, probably about four times in the last two decades. Um, and when you're producing Shakespeare, part of the challenge is how to make it accessible to the actors, how to make it accessible to the audience. Um, and we've had some success, we've had some failure with that. Um, but when we were brainstorming classes to offer, and I know in the past, Robert, you've taught mm -hmm. classes on leadership for Marjorie Book and chess. When we were brainstorming classes, we thought, you know, is there a class that would help make Shakespeare more accessible to a diverse group of people? And so uh, by looking at Romeo and Juliet through film, we thought we might be able to make Shakespeare a little bit more accessible. A lot of people today are just more comfortable uh, viewing film, it's a little less intimidating for them than going to a live performance. Um, and part of the fun in watching these um, Shakespeare plays adapted for film are the choices that the directors and producers and um, you know script editors make about what are they going to include in the film, what are they going to leave out. In a few cases, not many, some of the filmmakers have chosen to add in new things to the Shakespeare film that wasn't in the original script. Hmm. And you realize so, that. It, and, and that is rare, but it, there, are, there are some examples of it. So in the class, we've been looking at different versions, um, often of the same scene, but from um, different filmmakers in different time periods and discussing the differences. So we've, um, we've looked at it, the 1936 version, the 1968 version, the 1994 version, and the 2010 version of Romeo and Juliet and, and are comparing it. And I think people in the class are enjoying that and they're probably a little more willing to talk about their response to different scenes than they might be in a, say, a formal, you know, high school or college class. Do you teach the class, Joe? I am teaching the class. I haven't taught very many Marjorie book classes over the years. I've always tried That's to have other idea. instructors mm -hmm, yeah. come in um, but this, this particular time I decided to teach it. I've only, the only other class I've taught for Marjorie Book was a class on the philosophy of art. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, following this up now with another art related class with the Romeo and Juliet in film. Um, and it, it's, I have to say this class is not, is not as challenging to teach as some other classes because, um, I think people just have a lot they want to share in the class when they view a film clip. Mm -hmm. And and Joe is a professional teacher. He is, yeah, I realize. Yeah, he, he, he's university trained, university affiliated. <laughs> you with UCN, Xavier, correct? Yes, yes. I, so I, I try to be a professional, hopefully. I'm, he is. Hopefully I'm working towards that. He's, he's there. <laughs> yeah. he's, just, he's, he, he's there. He's being modest. That's he's all. Being modest. He's being modest. But he, he deserves a lot of. He's got a lot of guts. Is what you he would does. call that pure tenacity. He just doesn't know how to surrender. Doesn't know how to give up. Doesn't know how to to turn around and run away. Or if he does, he doesn't seem to act like he does. He doesn't show it. No. Yeah, he he doesn't sweat. He his whole thing is like that commercial. Never let him see his sweat. <laughs> you know. So he he does his sweating later on. <laughs> And Joe, I really, I'm serious. I enjoy what what you're doing and where you're where you're headed with things. And now, correct me if I'm wrong. 
But one of the versions that you were showing had a little bit of kind of a science fiction touch to it as well, you know. And that was kind of interesting to me, you know, a little sci-fi run we or Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that 1994 version of Romeo and Juliet that was produced by Baz Luhrmann, it is very um, different from any version you would see um, with a lot of um, modern images mm -hmm. mixed in with the older images. The and fantasy. so um, when, you know, for example, when the priest is trying to get a hold of Romeo to tell him about the plan where um, Juliet is going to fake her death, uh, in the 1994 movie, they have a FedEx uh, driver <laughs> bring the messages to Romeo, which, of course, Romeo misses the messages, and that causes the tragedy at the end. Uh, but there's a lot of touches in the 1994 film where modern um, things like instead of carrying swords, um, all of Romeo's kinsmen and enemy are carrying guns. Didn't uh, FedEx leave a note? They did leave. <laughs> well, they let it, left a note on Romeo's trailer and mm -hmm. said urgent, but somehow he missed those messages. I, I wasn't, to be honest with you, that's one of the scenes of the film. I wasn't quite sure why he missed the messages, but... He missed them. Because <laughs> I got a couple of notes from FedEx not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not Bill Collection. No, no, no. <laughs> and see, this is the thing that, to me, that is so exciting uh, about the theatrical arts, is that you can do so many things with them. Mm. You know, because I mean, I've, Joe's had people on stage singing who did not think of themselves ever Sing. as singing. You know, and uh, I've seen some really nice things done, very interesting, extremely entertaining, and giving people the opportunity to express themselves more fully. And I just uh, applaud that effort. And not only the effort, but I applaud the success. And I look forward to the next season, which I know you haven't set up yet, <laughs> but do some dreaming and let it come forth. And who knows, you know, Ron's a playwright, so maybe think about doing an mm -hmm. original Ron Miller piece. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. throwing that out there. Yes, and you know what? I've been very excited to hear about Vulcan's Forge because I, I think Marjorie Book, with our limited time that we have, we've devoted a lot of our energy to performing on stage. Uh, you know, established playwrights mm -hmm. who um, are performed in many other places, and we occasionally will perform a local playwright, but that's not. Um, that's not been our um, that's not been our core activity, um, but I but I'm excited about Vulcan's Forge because I know there's opportunity for many local writers to have their work showcased through Vulcan's Forge. So I, I think see. Vulcan's Forge and Marjorie Book could really be working you know could work together in a nice way here in Greater Cincinnati. I see Vulcan's Forge creating in infrastructure of uh, different groups in the area. So. Um, we can we can produce those that work and get work out to other people like to Marjorie book maybe you can utilize some of our mm -hmm. writers and we can utilize some of your actors and bring together some pieces of performance art looking forward to working with uh, Marjorie book on that on those kind of things Vulcan Sports is always one intended to be kind of an umbrella organization to bring together all these different art groups into one performance piece we have visionaries and voices, the melodic connections, just to name two others, and there's wordplay, just to name a few. So, you know, Marjorie Book, if we can kind of combine the talents of all these, these separate, varying art, artists and artistries, hopefully we'll have something, like I say, to create an infrastructure where these groups can come together. Well, one one of the things that I've really um, that I've really enjoyed about um, our group dabbling in Shakespeare is that um, you know sh the themes of many of Shakespeare's plays uh, do have a timeless element timeless, to them, yeah. and um, we have participants in Marjorie Book who may have. Uh, um, may be struggling with reading, writing, um, but they, but they um, demonstrate a lot of enjoyment about either watching Shakespeare or participating in Shakespeare. 
Um, I think because the themes of Shakespeare come through pretty clearly, even if you can't um, understand every line of Shakespeare, and I know I can't. Um, <laughs> I've you know been working with Shakespeare, I feel like my whole life, and I still struggle with lines um, in, in, all, in, in all of the plays that I've, I've worked at. But I, I recognize there's a certain power, you know, in this classic literature, um, and that the themes are well known. So in Romeo and Juliet, um, I think almost everyone in our group, we can all agree that we've, um, you know, experienced that love at first sight feeling, and mm -hmm. that comes through really strongly in the play, even though it was written um, 400 years ago, um, you still identify with that love at first sight feeling. We're still loving at first sight yeah. 400 years ago. <laughs> And some of the trouble that love at first yes. sight can cause. Yes. I think that part. We, and the families that don't want mm -hmm. you in the family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and I, I, I mean, I love Shakespeare for that same reason. And I, um, I love some of, the, some of the lines just are so strong to me in, in so many of the Shakespearean pieces. And I'm especially just a fan of Hamlet and that, that whole mm -hmm. struggle you know, that goes on inside a human being. And then there's the fantasies that are, of course, Midsummer Night's Dream and mm -hmm. how crazy it is and, and how crazy life is and things are scurrying around. And um, I think Romeo and Juliet, though, is, is especially for the romantic souls, and I think the three of us especially, I think we mm -hmm. are romantic souls. Romantic souls. You know, stayed up all night, cried more than once. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, there were tears of joy either. But <laughs> You know, but tears of strong confusion, but, you know, there it is. But tears of joy create great art. Is that it? Right. Well, <laughs> then we should have some really great art coming we out. We do have some great art. You know, so that's good. That's good. Joe, what, what got you involved with one of these books? What got you turned on so much about this crazy notion that people can have theater, <laughs> you know, and that they can act and that they can perform and that others can enjoy and participate. What, what turned you on? What got you? Well, um, when, when, I was, um, when I was in high school and college, mm -hmm. I had the fortune to get involved with some local nonprofits that provided services to people with disabilities. I really enjoyed that experience. But at that time, which would have been the early to mid 1990s, I also saw that um, people with disabilities um, you know, were often being offered programs that were pretty cookie cutter. Um, the programs weren't looking at the person's individual interests. They were just saying, we've got a program for you, come in and be part of it. Um, and so there was a small group of us that talked about trying to do something different and we had a lot of discussions and brainstorming and a theater program was one of the things that we discussed, that, mm -hmm. um, a the that theater is very, there, there, is, there are a lot of opportunities in theater for people to take on differing parts, big roles, small roles, there are behind the scenes roles that can be mm -hmm. played. So we wanted um, to offer theater experiences to people with disabilities, um, but at the same time, we thought, um, you know, at that time in the early to mid 90s, there weren't a lot of programs that seemed to be trying to bring people with and without disabilities together. Mm -hmm. So we made that a focus too. Um, I think both of those things were in our mind um, when we started the group. And, um, you know, fortunately, 25 years later, I think there are more opportunities in greater Cincinnati for people with and without disabilities to come together. I think there's, there's many more diverse opportunities available for um, young people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, but Marjorie Book still seems to be serving a, a good function here in the community, so we keep going. Uh, so next year will be year 26. Well, Congratulations. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll keep going until we're no longer needed anymore. <laughs> That's a long time, 26 years. Congratulations. Really time. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. I didn't realize it had been that long. I've been around with you for 26 yeah. years. <laughs> You've been working hard for the last 26 years. I didn't realize it was that long. So it, something must be working right. You don't stick around the place for 26 years. You know, so that's great. 
That is that is great. You know, do you see any? Do you have a vision for the future, or you just letting it happen, come and enjoy it as it as it comes and goes? Well, I you know, I. I think we have so many young people that have been involved in our organization over the mm -hmm. years. Um, people that are in high school, people that are in college or college aged. And um, I think we continue to explore ways to make theater feel relevant to them. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, we're, you know, I think our vision for the future is we're trying to listen to younger people, uh, people that are you know, a lot younger than three of us about um, how they see a play performance unfolding. I know this past year, we had a couple of young people that did trivia during the intermission with the audience. Um, you know, we took a little bit of time away from the play so that they could do the trivia um, because that was something that was important to younger people. And we recognize that um, today's audiences, they may struggle a little bit more with non-musical plays, so we need to provide probably more supports and more um, uh, more ways to make the average play exciting. On the other hand, we know that our audiences today are absolutely um, gung-ho about musicals. Musicals are a big part of people's lives. Now we do one musical a year, um, and so we you know continue to try to find ways to you know, increase the quality of our musicals. We know that there's a lot of competition out there a lot of musicals out there to be seen in the greater Cincinnati area. Can you give us some examples of some of the musicals uh, that you have performed or want to perform? Mm -hmm. Well, we have, um, in terms of uh, more well-known musicals, um, we've done a couple. We've done um, Footloose. Uh, that was uh, fun. It was. It I was remember that. Fun. A lot of work. Yeah. A lot of cowboy <laughs> outfits and a lot of cowboy hats and. You know, I remember one of the actors, he had this great big, huge buckle. About <laughs> yes, he that's was. right. <laughs> I've done Godspell. Godspell. Uh, that's and, always a good one. And that's very popular with all theater groups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we've done um, South Pacific um, by Rodgers and Hammerstein. Mm -hmm. um, and we have done a number of lesser known musicals. Those tend to be a little bit more accessible for our group because financially, you don't have to pay out uh, quite the large royalties for less known musicals. So we've done Anne of Green Gables, the musical. We've done Animal Farm, the musical, uh, kind of an unusual one. Uh, Char <laughs> yeah, Charlotte's that. Web, um, the musical. The musical. Stuart Little, the musical. Um, and um, we did a musical about Jack Dracula and Frankenstein. Um, <laughs> so we've we've enjoyed both the the lesser known musicals and the the more well-known. Um, we are looking at this year, at um, this coming year, 2019, at potentially doing another Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. So we're just making the final Which one would you, are you choices. looking at? Are you? I think, I think um, you know, probably Carousel and Oklahoma are on the list. Mm -hmm. um, so you, how can you go wrong with either one of those? And what, you know, even for me, I tell you one of my favorite ones was Carousel. And I, I, I love it, just, you know, again, there's a tremendous amount of romance there in Carousel for me. And there's, a, you know, romance literally, I guess, and romance figuratively in terms of the way we think of romance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, my late wife, Gloria, used to call it wonderlust. <laughs> and I think that's the, the word there, you know, the, the Carousel, the wonderlust, the things that spark your imagination and say, you know, can I go forward? What can I, can I dream about? Uh, should I be afraid? It answers that question, looks at that question in terms of being afraid. The whole concept of the carousel and what's on it and what mm -hmm. it represents uh, is, is fast. You know, I, like I said, I'm a romantic and I know I am, you know, and I love, I'm a dreamer. And for me, carousel answers those frightful questions and those questions about the future and those questions in terms of saying, you know, what am I willing to do to stand tall and deal with whatever's coming at me and survive it and grow from it? I think Oklahoma would have my vote. I always enjoyed Oklahoma. Oh, that was Oklahoma. The, <laughs> that was, was Rogers and Hammerstein's first. Music. Was it their first? Mm -hmm. Where yeah. the wind comes sweeping down the plains. Yes. 
Yeah, and you know, one thing I like about Marjorie Book is that we um, were a group that um, involves a lot of diverse people, but we don't shy away from controversy in plays. So when we did South Pacific, um, there are some controversial elements with race mm -hmm. in South Pacific, and we talked about those. We talked a little bit with the audience about it. I think Carousel would be a similar situation. It has some come on, controversial um, elements with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think in our group, though, we're, um, we're a place where we can talk about that openly, and um, this might be, we, we might have participants who've never had the opportunity to try to be a part of something controversial. So. Um, we're, we're a good forum for that, I think, in a safe place to do it. I was going to say, not only a good one, but it's, it, because it's safe. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're dealing with something that didn't happen. It's not real in the sense of mm -hmm. it, 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 it's going on, but it's dealing with subject matter that deals with the emotions and the realities of realness and what that can do. Uh, and, I, and I would agree with you. So keep on keeping on, as they say. Keep on keeping on. Where do you, um, Ron, where do, do you see the possibility, and I know you talked about it and you said it already a little bit, but where would you see um, a local playwright maybe fitting into what Marjorie Book is trying to do? Well, I'd like to see um, maybe some of your people write something. You know, short one acts. I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any writers in the group? I think we have uh, several individuals that would enjoy being part of a writing team, and we've um, our group has participated in some writing workshops um, over the last uh, ten years, and always enjoyed them mm -hmm. for sure. Maybe somehow we could get uh, since that playwrights initiative on board with some of this. Some of their playwrights might be willing to work with us and uh, Marjorie Book, mm -hmm. and maybe get some skits or some one acts. You put together an evening of one acts. Mm -hmm. And then have your people perform them? One of the projects where we are working on, it may not happen until 2020, but we, um, there was a local playwright named Renee Alper, um, who I know both of you knew. Um, I know Renee. Renee uh, had passed away, but had written a number of um, one-act plays and, and one or two longer plays. And we're, we are looking to perform uh, a number of Renee's plays. She was in a uh, player with a disability that had been a part of our group. Um, and so we hope in either 2019 or 2020 to do a night of Renee's works. Um, oh, at least looking forward to that. Them. that. That could be great. Mm -hmm. That could be great. We've got about one minute to, to, to finish up and I just, it, it hit me so strongly in terms of, I love what you said about Renee because I remember, what was it, non-vertical girl? Yes. Was, yes. About yeah. her own life story. Yes, being non-vertical, person in a wheelchair who doesn't stand up. She's mm -hmm. non-vertical, non-vertical girl. And I'm just saying that that's great. We're out of time. Joe, thank you for coming. And, and Juan, nice to with you. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Thank you. And Joe, you just keep on keeping on, man. And thank you for coming. And please come back to Balkan Sports. Take care. Folks, be well and get involved. You can do it if you try. God loves you. I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you.